Welcome to the first ever episode of Fun Rover TV. This show is made by Land Rover enthusiasts for the Land Rover community and will help you in the daily running, maintaining and upgrading of your Landy. Storage boxes. They're not the first thing that comes to the mind when you imagine circumnavigating the world in your Defender. Normally, you picture exotic tropical jungle tracks, starlit nights spent in deserts, and experiencing the Earth and its people firsthand. Ben will tell you why picking the right adventure storage is important. Boxes are important. Now, if you look at this one here, come on, Heath, pull it in. This one here contains all your photographic equipment. Uh, you might have spares, tools, lots of important stuff, perhaps even your food. So, you want a box that is rugged, that is tough. Problem with rugged and tough is it means it's over-engineered, like this box. But this box also happens to be expensive because it's so well designed. So, when you add to that the fact that you'll probably be buying two, maybe even up to eight of these boxes, depending on how many vehicles you've got on your trip, you're looking at quite a big expense. So, it's important to know which one is actually the best. So, we're going to put these to a series of extreme tests to see which one really is the best box and which one you should spend your hard-earned cash on. Ben's gathered two different options for overland travellers. The popular wolf box that's generally thought of as the go-to box for travelling and the really useful box that he's been testing for a while. So here are our two boxes. This one's the bog standard wolf box. Now, this one was designed by Front Runner originally. This one's a flat dog box. It is based on a South African army ammo box, apparently. It's around 50 litres, so it's a reasonable size. It's, it's pretty big internally, it's quite reasonable. It's pretty tough. Different boxes will interstack with each other, which is obviously a handy thing. But the problems with this box, these catches here are known to break quite easily. They're not very strong. We tested this. Most of the um, catches took about 700 grams of force to open. For whatever reason, this one here, on this back corner, takes about less than 100. So I'm not sure why, maybe it's not quite molded correctly, I don't know. Two of those should fit into the load bed of your Defender. So that's the, the Wolf Box, very popular option. Here we have a really useful box. Now the really useful box has got much stronger catches on. It's listed on the website of the uh, company as being able to take the weight of a person, which this one should too. It's around the same size, again, 50 litres. But the best thing about this box is the price and the waterproofness. Now, this one, which is going to be popular with travellers, is it's taken to places like the desert, inhospitable places, and it's not waterproof. I'll show you underneath. It's actually got some holes in. Don't know why. And it, just the nature of this lid design means that sand can get in quite easily. So if you've got your food or anything in there that's not going to react well to grit, not a great box. This one, on the other hand, totally waterproof and sandproof, which is a, a big advantage. But the best thing about this box is the price. Now this here is £33, okay? 33 quid for a box. That's including shipping and tax. Without that, it's about 23 quid or roughly $50. This one, on the other hand, was £15 with shipping, with tax, all included. £15, so it's basically half the price of one of these. Time for some scientific testing. The first test is the weight load test. Boxes make a great hop up to be able to access your roof rack or simply a makeshift campfire seat. So we'll test to see if the boxes can withstand this kind of use. So this is the wolf box. I weigh about 16 stone. And so then so. This could, anything could happen. First foot. Well, it feels pretty strong actually. Okay, sit test should pass this one quite easily. Yeah, I mean, you could sit around barbecue time, campfire, whatever, that's fine. Not comfortable, but that's not part of the test. And now the really useful box. Obviously, it's not quite as sturdy as the Wolf box, but it's holding my weight. You could use that as a step. Perfectly fine. And sit, again, should be a trivial now. Fine. Actually, because it's a bit higher, it's a little bit more comfortable as well. Both boxes received a well-earned point there. It's one apiece. 
Now let's see if the boxes can withstand desert conditions. Okay, let's go get the sand. We've just got some sort of bog standard builder sand. It's about three pounds per bag. We've got a nice big bag here because uh, we wanted to replicate desert sand as much as possible, obviously. Let's put some on the wolf box. Ben's purposefully trying to get as much sand in the boxes as possible to Down see just how well the lids hold up. And because, because it's in the desert, sand gets everywhere. Let's do that. Let's do the really useful box. I'm quietly confident about this one. This would be a kind of unrealistic test, but if it uh, withstands that, then you should be pretty good. So I'm trying to get it in the box now. Let's see how the boxes did. And there is absolutely no sand in there whatsoever, apart from here, where I did kind of ram it in. So it's done a pretty good job. Obviously, if you wanted to protect your stuff a little bit more, you could get some cheap polythene bags. Those can be so found very cheaply on eBay. Right, let's try the wolf box. <sighs> they are tough boxes. I mean, they've done a good job. Oh dear. The wolf box couldn't quite stand up to the sand test, meaning the really useful box came out on top. If the holes on the underside of the wolf box were sealed, the results would have been closer. So with the scores at 2-1 to the really useful box, let's see how they do in the water test. Next test is water. Now we want to see how waterproof these boxes are. If you're going to put them on top of your roof rack, for example, they're going to get blasted by water. At whatever speed you're doing, for example, on the motorway, 70 miles an hour with rain hitting it, that's pretty difficult for any box to withstand. Neither of these have got O-rings on the lids. So we're just going to see which one really holds out the most water. Our English weather simulator seems to be malfunctioning. Okay, so this is sort of the equivalent of a, a very high power run down the motorway. Let's do the wolf box again. Okay, so let's see how the boxes did. This is the really useful box. Carefully take that off. And inside, there is no water, all that water you can see there is actually on the underneath. Totally dry. I actually had one of those on top of my roof rack um, for about six months. Everything inside was totally dry, no mould, no mildew, nothing. So brilliant box, no o-rings or anything. So it's just a good tight fit that makes it watertight. The Wolf box, I don't think this has fared as well. I'm guessing. Let's take these catches off. Carefully take the lid off. Yeah, there's some water in there. Now, I don't know why, but they, they've put holes in the bottom. So it's a bit of a weak point. You can see there, there is quite a bit of water in there, which if your food was in there again, or your clothes, not a pleasant thing to have happened. Another point to the really useful box sees the scores at 3-1. The next test, I'm not sure which way this is gonna go because hypothetical situation, you've gone to China, You've collected all of these fancy, fine artifacts and you put them in your box, you put them on the roof rack and an incident happens and they fall off. What's going to happen? Will the box be strong enough? Will it smash? What's going to happen to the inside? Let's find out. Okay, so the next test, we're going to get some fine china and some, some glass and we'll put them into the boxes and see how well they do. Okay, so we've got some fine china here. Wonderful. Um, Maddock? I don't know. Insightful ceramic box. knowledge there. Stick some plates in. Some cups. Let's just make this. Oh dear. A little bit quicker. 
I've also got some uh, some wonderful chalices. Fun Rover will be offering home moving services very shortly. That's broke. Oh, I know what else we can put in. Uh, here we have a working iPhone, you see that? Working iPhone. Let's put that in this box as well. So let's lid up. Uh, I'm gonna drop this off the bonnet. Because <laughs> let's pretend we were loading this up. It's gonna be the same height every time. <sighs> right, let's drop it and see. Let's just take, let's take some of these out. <clears throat> same height, same drop, similar objects. Three, two, one. Right, let's see how the boxes did. Let's see how the iPhone did. Let's pick that out first. Catches, they all seem to be okay. Oh dear. Well, that's quite sharp, actually. Uh, ah. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that that's no longer working. Next box. Uh, uh, oh, dear. Yeah, they're broken. Oh, no. The box, has, the box has suffered. It was quite a high drop to be fair. So if you are a little bit more careful, that wouldn't happen. So after a nine foot drop onto concrete, the wolf box survived unscathed, whilst the really useful box suffered catastrophic damage. Obviously in practice, you'd be a lot more careful with your storage boxes, but the wolf box is made of very tough ABS plastic and providing the contents are non-damageable should take some hard knocks and scuffs. The scores are now 3-2. Final test is a trauma test, I guess. Uh, basically, we're going to play a light round of axe golf. Uh, it's going to involve hitting the boxes and crucial points to see whether they do break any further. Okay, so safety first. Always wear a glove. Remember, don't try this at home. We have our axe, the glove, the ball, in effect. We've even got a nice bunker. So um, let's try the really useful box first. This one is broken to be fair. So let's see how well it does now. Always making sure you get the right grip. Yeah, that's broken more. Let's try the, the wolf box now. Now this is hopefully a lot stronger. So. Let's see. I would like to keep this box after this. Let's see if we can break it. Let's have a look at the, the box itself. All right, looks like another one to the wolf box. After all those tests, the final score is three apiece. The wolf box is extremely tough, well made, bar its few minor design flaws, and is a very good option for those looking to safely store their expedition equipment in the back of their Land Rover or on a roof rack. The really useful box at half the price performed very well, beating the Wolf box in crucial sand and water ingress tests and providing care is taken with handling makes for an excellent cost-effective storage container for your adventures. If you've enjoyed the episode of Fun Rover TV, check out funrover.com the free online Land Rover magazine. Thanks for watching and remember, where we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs>